So two big, shall we say, pieces of paper came out last week. Not just the Sue Gray report, because again, as important as that was, there were two other crucial things that came out as well. First of all was the levelling up report, which, as I'm sure you, we, you can know on this channel, uh, we are not, shall we say, fans of what was, was said in that uh, piece of paper. In fact, it was absolutely uh, appalling. There is no levelling up to be found anywhere within that report. Not only that, we also had the very, very now infamous the benefits of Brexit news, Brexit report, extolling the benefits of Brexit. After all, two years have passed, so should we not finally be seeing benefits of Brexit coming at last? As we've said many, many times before on this channel, look, if there were actual, genuine, serious benefits of Brexit, the Brexiteers would be shouting out about, out, not only about them, but out about them constantly, 24 7 so it's very very telling that even they are so so nervous about people conning finally getting on and going oh my god there's no there's no there's no Brexit benefits what are we what are we gonna do we told them all this stuff what what, what are we gonna do that's the situation they're now in and they can't admit to themselves that they lied um but of course, many of these Brexiteers have these grand, fan fantastical fantasy plans of, of turning the UK into a Singapore on the Thames. And as we discussed, what, two, three weeks ago now, we went over how that in itself is an absolute myth and a complete misrepresentation of like the economy of Singapore and how it operates. So <laughs> let's get in today to Daniel Hanan, the brain of Brexit, because he apparently had a thing or two to say himself about this benefits of Brexit paper. So before we go jumping into that, please do remember to hit that like, share and subscribe button. And of course, down below, down below there are links to my Patreon page and a donation link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can, well, buy me coffee. And as always, thank you very much to all those people who do support the channel that way. So on with this. So this comes from uh, the Yorkshire Bylines with the title of Hanan. Brexit benefits paper is thin gruel, which, well, to be honest, I'd, I'd say it's you're giving gruel a bit of a bad name. <laughs> you know, gruel can, could actually be considered con quite thick compared to the benefits of Brexit paper that was put out. But <laughs> that's Daniel Hanan. So the recently published benefits of Brexit paper appears to have landed badly and has been given something of a less than lukewarm reception by both sides of the argument. Described as fundamentally meaningless by Professor Chris Gray and by Lord Hanan as thin, watery, watery, tasteless gruel. Nobody seems satisfied, but this is a situation that many people predicted back in 2016, given the political breadth of the coalition behind Brexit. Reading the paper's 105 pages is like being on the receiving end of a Johnson argument, a flurry of head-snapping but irrelevant and inconsequential assertions, confidently delivered and sprinkled with the odd and barely recognisable fragment of truth, all calculated to try and win the argument by battering in you to submission. It's the kind of report not intended for serious reading or analysis but as a thickish document to try and whack unbelievers over the head with, to try and create the impression of substance, written, as Orwell once said, in the sort of political language designed to make lies sound truthful and murder respectful and give an appearance of solidarity to pure wind. It may have come across better, of course, if the government wasn't presenting this, <laughs> present, wasn't at present, stumbling from crisis to crisis, many of them the direct result of Brexit. And of course, the delays at Dover, the plummeting exports, the soaring energy costs, failing, falling living standards, ongoing difficulties, currently boiling over again, surrounding the Northern Ireland Protocol. But all of you know that, and you have to admire the civil service authors for the sheer, for the sheer chutzpah, if nothing else. It was very cleverly constructed, like a normal government paper. The 127 bullet points spread, uh, spread over more than 50 sections cover every possible area of the British economy. The first few items under the very dubious heading are achievements so far, 
list some of the points which are inconvertible facts about setting our own global tariffs, for example, uh, or of if something, if a very doubtful benefit was interspersed with other points that are either arguable or just plainly wrong. We could, for example, have streamlined the import-export controls, had blue, had blue passports or crowns on pint glasses while inside the EU. Other points are just simple assertions that are purely aspirational, such as trying to review the review and retaining EU law, which may or may not be a result in the significant change in some future date. But it does set the tone for the rest of the paper. Bold headings, bullet points, and subheadings in blue, followed by a paragraph of black text. Each point looks the same, giving the impression that the designer was trying to, smetch, trying to stretch such a small fig leaf over such a large area of propaganda. For example, bullet point one of no longer paying EU budget con uh, contributions, saying, leaving the EU has meant that the UK has not had to pay to contribute to the significant new... Uh, uh, liabilities arising from the EU's COVID response, including for the first time the EU borrowing up to 750 billion euros between 2021 and 2024. We've instead directed our own spending and built our own response tailored to our domestic needs, including through the furlough scheme, the vaccine procurement, and we are trying to spend all of our money on domestic priorities, including uh, NHS, levelling up and achieving net zero. Hmm, very doubtful indeed. The other one, the 52 uh, billion more for the NHS. We are spending more money on our NHS by 2024 to 2025, the financial year, on our yearly expenditure of our NHS as predicted to be at least 57 billion higher in terms of cash than we spent in 2016 or 17, or over one billion pounds more per week. That's what they claimed, at least. Clearly, we are no longer obviously contributing to the EU, EU budget as members do, although we do pay towards some EU programmes like Horizon. But the next point, carefully juxtaposed below, seems to cleverly link that saving with the increased NHS spending. Uh, if this is the case, one is entitled to ask what the £20 billion a year raise for the health and social care bill by the National Insurance coming this week in April is actually for. Moreover, the £57 billion uh, pounds for the NHS is, is in cash terms, not adjusted for inflation. It covers a 10-year period from 20, uh, 2016 to 2025 and is the given value of the £2025, despite the fact that it will be worth much less by the time that we actually get there. The rest of the paper, uh, there is a lot of driving. Uh, 21 mentions apparently being done, usually coupled with the word forward, uh, counting at 22, in case you misunderstood what Brexit was for. There is even more building 32 mentions of work to be undertaken for our, quote, new freedoms, mentioned 33 times, and they're going to be used to build, again, mentioned 34 times, a lot more things as well. There are a lot of ambitions, mentioned 27 times, and rest assured that when we get there, whatever that is, the project to happen will be ambitious, mentioned 17 times, and, quote, tailored 14 times to British needs. There are no fewer than 29 references to Britain either being either being already becoming leaders in everything, from quantum science to technology to try and championing the rules-based international trading system. I fear that in this, this ambition may, be, may have got the better of the writers and they've indeed tumbled into delusion. The document even claims that Britain wants to slash, tackle, address, or reduce barriers to trade, even as a new border is created inside our own much smaller home market. Exporters are drowning in the swamp of new red tape introduced by Brexit, already facing huge barriers to trade in goods and services with our largest overseas market, and expecting more to come later this year. To many, the document will be just a sick joke. Far from congratulating, of course, the civil servants for, for of course, this feast out creating this feast out of very little, Hanan instead dismisses it as, quote, thin gruel and the worldview of Whitehall. Talk of new regulatory regimes or even new agencies or a new subsidy mechanism doesn't impress him at all. He literally wants regulations scrapped altogether and a return to the sort of Victorian era Wild West where burly entrepreneurs just settle things in bare knuckle fights or just hire hitmen. Think Moscow circa 1992. 
The Brexit backing peer may be, of course, interested in and no doubt puzzled by a report also released this week by the Global Britain Commission, chaired by his Brexit chum, Dr. Liam Fox. It apparently proclaims that Brexit could deliver a £500 billion windfall, the word, the operative word here being, of course, could. The Daily Mail gleefully reported it on it, saying this. While the UK is the one of the most significant trading nations in terms of absolute export value, bringing in at least £161 billion worth of exports and £159 billion of imports in just 2020, its performance on a per capita basis is less impressive. By that measure, exports of goods and services in the UK in 2020 were around about £8,597 per capita, compared with over the £15,645 in Germany. And, saying this, boosting our exports per capita to try and equal Germany, the UK uh, would bank an extra 475, uh, well, 474 billion pounds, the commission says, to create an export related jobs, which pay up to 7% more than the current average salary in the UK. Of course, eagle eyed male reasons possessing, possessing, possessing the gift for geography, and of course, a schoolboy Atlas, will perhaps spot that Germany is in Europe and actually in the EU. Indeed, unless my memory fails me, or was a founding, uh, or was a founding uh, member of its way of, of of and is weighed down with all that terrible EU regulations that Hanan desperately wants to get rid of. Let us hope that the, that the Brand Britain Commission's report will be able to tell us how Germany has managed it where we have not. This is the point made endlessly back in 2016 and many times more since, but it still remains unanswered. And warning. On no account, hold your breath for this. So, of course, this came out to, again, much fanfare. Again, I think it was an attempt by Boris to try and save himself and try and get his, at least, parts of the Brexiteers on his side. But again, it, it's sort of pointless. As, as was said there, much of the stuff we could have already done in the EU... Um, Again, it compares to Germany. Again, the country that has all these dreaded EU regulations is in the EU, a founding member, and is in the single market and customs union. Yet, somehow, Germany seems to be doing all right. And as we've mentioned and talked about time and time again, this was never, again, an EU problem. This was always a UK problem. Like the fact that our productivity, even when we're in the EU, um, it was absolutely awful compared to other European countries. We lagged behind them so much to a fact where I think most of Europe could have gone on holiday in like October and come back in January. And the UK still wouldn't have caught up in terms of production, which, again, <laughs> is shocking. And of course, the Brexit answer to all this is that UK workers are just really lazy because they're protected by all this evil workers rights legislation. <laughs> And of course, the working time directive, etc., etc. And don't worry, I guarantee you, sooner or later, we will see attacks on these uh, fundamental workers' rights that we have here in the UK. And hopefully, um, as I said back all the way back then, I do hope that these Brexiteers that wanted Brexit will actually join us on these fights and help us to protect all these workers' rights, which we are again suddenly about to lose. Because I guarantee you. That's what's going to be a go, go for first. But as always, uh, thank you very much uh, for watching. Uh, please do remember to hit that like, share, and subscribe button. And of course, uh, if you would like to support the channel a different way, there are links down below to my Patreon page and a one-off donation link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can well buy me coffee. And as always, thank you very much to all those people who do support the channel that way. And as always, we'll see you all next time.